In today's video, I'm going to show you guys a great solar blanket that I got from Opti Solex. And also, I'm going to use it as a demonstration to show you guys how to connect multiple solar panels, both in parallel and in series. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. When it comes to solar power, understanding how to properly connect your solar panels is critical in getting the most efficient and safe performance out of your system. So today we're gonna to break that down step by step. The first thing we talk about are how solar panels are built. At the heart of every solar panel are solar cells, typically made from silicon. These cells are the building blocks of a panel and they're small but powerful. Each solar cell produces about half a volt of electricity. On their own, it's not that much. So to reach usable voltage levels, cells are wired together in series within the panel. For example, a panel of 40 individual silicon cells wired in series will have an open circuit voltage of about 20 volts. Most common commercial solar panels output about 20 volts, and a typical 100 watt panel can deliver about five amps under optimal conditions at that level of voltage. So here's the Opti Solex. Solar bag 400. And don't let the compact size fool you. This is actually 440 watts worth of portable solar. And it's probably the nicest solar blanket. They call this a solar bag, but it is comparable to what other manufacturers call a solar blanket because there is no way for you to prop this up. This is meant to be hung from a couple of hooks draped over your car or just simply laid on the ground now there's a couple of new innovative features with this solar bag that i've not seen before but let me first show you something that i thought was really cool the way that this buckles together it unfolds so you can unfold it you can unbuckle it you can proceed to unfold this out to its full deployment. So there are, there are a total of 12 sections like this. The way that this is designed, it is very shade proof. And that is not how a lot of solar panels work. That is pretty unique to how these guys have done it. And I really like that. And I don't know if you noticed, there's also a zipper that goes right down the middle because this is actually set up as two separate panels. Each one of these is 220 watts and they can be unzipped and used separately or used together. And when you unzip it, and each of these have their own MC4 plug. So this is for this side and this is for the other side. Each of these also have their own USB-C and USB-A outputs. So you can actually use this separately or together. To use it together, you can choose to run these in parallel or in series. The easiest way is to run them in series, which means by plugging in either one of these, positive into negative, and then you'll double the voltage output and you plug these in here's the specs the entire setup would both combine running in series like this we're outputting a max of 440 watts and when you connect them in series the output voltage is 36 volts open circuit voltage 42 volts short circuit current 11.8 amps so that's how you can have a relatively thin wire at running at 440 watts this is called a solar back 400 because i believe this is an updated version where they've actually able to increase the power output by 10 percent from 400 to 440. and if you use one of these separately at a time each one is 220 watts so you just kind of half the wattage and half the voltage of each one and we're at 18 volts, half the open circuit voltage, but 
at the same amount of amps. Comes with a couple of shoulder straps, so if you want to carry these separately, you can. Also comes with four of these carabiners for you to be able to secure these to hooks, to your vehicles, maybe roof rack. They pack down really, really nicely. 12 by 17 by four and a half inches in dimension. It's 21.06 by 17.16 by 4.53 inches in dimension when both are combined. And when you just have half of them, you have the same width and length, but half the thickness at 2.17. It's really nice quality. This is something that I'm really impressed by, just by how well this is built. And it's also very thoughtful, thoughtfully designed, because I've never seen this. These handles are soft, to the touch and they're also very sturdy and the stitching is really good when you close it and you buckle it together there's actually a little lever that you can lock the buckle so it doesn't come undone accidentally that's a very thoughtful design that i've not seen anybody else do so now you can't undo these buckles until you unlock it and it comes right off. So let me show you how big this is when it's deployed. It is, as you would imagine, with this many cells, it's relatively heavy. It clocks in at 17.19 pounds, so under 18 pounds, but for 440 watts, 18 pounds. That's actually not that big a deal for so much power. So we'll talk about first type of solar connection with multiple panels, and that is connecting panels in parallel. To connect panels in parallel, you wire positive to positive and negative to negative. This setup keeps the voltage the same, but it increases the amperage. However, it is important to use panels that are the same open circuit voltage to avoid power loss and imbalance. You would need MC4 parallel connectors or other types of compatible junction connectors to make these connections secure and weather resistant. For example, four 100 watt panels connected in parallel will still give you about 20 volts, but the amperage will increase to about 20 amps in ideal conditions. And keep in mind, at 20 amps, your typical 10 gauge wire will be near its limit, especially if you have long runs. So make sure you use appropriately sized wires for your connection. Parallel connectors are better for partial shade situations since each panel can operate independently. Next, we'll talk about series connections. Here you connect the negative of the first panel to the positive of the second panel. And you can continue to add additional panels the same way, which is why it's sometimes called a daisy chain connection. In a series setup, the voltages add up while the amperage stays the same. So that means four 100 watt panels in series will output about 80 volts, but the max current still remains at about five amps. This approach doesn't require any special junction boxes, just basic wiring, so it's a lot simpler. Series wiring is ideal for simple layouts and allows for smaller gauge wires to be used since higher voltage will mean less current. However, it is less shade tolerant. A single shaded panel in the series can drag down the entire string. So lastly, we'll talk about a hybrid system, which will have panels that are connected in series as well as parallel. This type of connection is a go-to for larger solar arrays in an off-grid scenario. All the same rules will apply. You wanna match voltages for parallel strings and you wanna match amperages for series connections. To demonstrate how this works, let me show you two common configurations of an 800 watt array using eight 100 watt 20 volt panels. First is what we call a 4P2S setup that'll have four panels in parallel and there'll be two sets of them connected in series. This will give you a 40 volt system outputting at 20 amps max. Conversely, you can also do what's called a 4S2P setup That'll give you two sets of four panels connected in series, and those two sets will be connected in parallel. That will give you 80 volts of output at 10 amps of current. 
The right configuration depends on your charge controller, inverter, wire length, overall system design, and a handful of other things. So whether you're building a small off-grid system or a large rooftop array, understanding how to wire your panels in series, in parallel, or both will help you get the best performance from your solar investment. We're just gonna show you guys how big this is and how easy it is to deploy. When you unbuckle it, you just proceed to unfold. Unfold it sideways, unfold, unfold that way, and then unfold this way. And now you have all the panels, all 12 individual panels. So when you have these run in combined mode, these six panels are gonna be in series with these six panels. And when you unzip it, Now you have two separate panels that you can carry individually. And this is much, much lighter of a package to carry. And there's a little Velcro tab that you can use to secure it. So you can hold it like that. So that's one side and here's the other side. Again, Velcro pad. So you go from one 440 watt panel to two 220 watt panels. This is a great option out there for somebody who wants a lot of ground deployable solar in a very small package. I think it's a good comparison to compare the OptiSolex Solarback 400 to the Renogy Solar Suitcase 400. The OptiSolex being a solar blanket which cannot be propped up versus the Renogy solar suitcase being an actual suitcase that has legs and is a semi-rigid panel versus a flexible panel. The Renogy solar suitcase also has an aluminum frame, potentially has better cooling because it is not directly making contact with the ground or any other surface. But the thing that makes the OptiSolex better for me is the actual size. When I got the Renogy solar suitcase, I had expected to be carrying that in our camper. However, I just cannot find a place that's big enough for me to carry it. If you look at the size differences, the expanded size isn't actually what matters for me. It is the folded size. So the Renji Solar Suitcase and the Opti Solex Solar Bag have roughly the same amount of square area of solar cells, which makes sense because they produce about the amount of power. But the folded size is where it really matters. Whereas the Renogy folds down to about 28 inches by 34, 33, 34 inches, the Opti Solex folds down to 21 by 17. And that is a huge difference for me. And also, as you can see, it is almost half the weight. And because of these reasons, the Opti Solex solar bag is a much better solar panel for me to carry around for the kind of travel that we do. All right, so here we are up in the hills of Santa Barbara. We're camping here for a couple of days and I thought it was the perfect opportunity to test the Opti Solex. The sun is just about overhead right now, it is actually almost exactly noon at the moment. So I've got the Opti Solex set up on the ground and it's set up in parallel oh, in series mode actually. So the two panels are in series. And as you can tell here, try not to shade the panel. We're getting just about 10 amps in this wire. 10 amps. And that's actually performing really good because it is coming in it's showing 315 watts out of a 440 watt panel, but that is because there's also a draw on the panel. So with the power going in, 
this battery pack is currently supplying power to this fridge which is actually set up in, in freezer mode and then it's also powering Luca who's on his computer he's in class right now <laughs> and also it's powering our Starlink Mini on top of the Pelican box so you'll see that the panel is outputting 40.7 volts because they're connected in series so at just about 10 amps we're actually getting 400 watts of output from these two panels right now this battery only charges via alternator usually I have to plug in a panel right here and I'm using you can almost see there's a red light right there that is the Red Arc BC DC Alpha 50 which will do both alternator charging up to 50 amps as well as solar midday sun that's like over 90 percent efficiency so there you go that's how you connect solar panels in series and also that is the opti solex 440 watt solar blanket that's the one of the most compact solar blankets that i've ever seen and i think it's especially cool that it's actually two 220 watt panels that zips together using this system you can choose how you want to connect your panels both in series or in parallel depending on your situation. If you want to learn more about the Opti Solex 440 watt solar blanket, I'll put a link in the description below. There will be a discount code in the description as well that our friends at Opti Solex has kindly offered. If you want to learn more about solar for off-grid scenarios, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.